Starting off this countdown, we have Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen went after Bieber, a fellow Canadian, during an interview with Howard Stern. He said, and I quote, Bieber is a good example of someone who you meet and you think you're gonna hate him and then you get to hate him as much as you thought. Yikes, what did Bieber do to him? Well, apparently the two first met at a German talk show when Justin asked if they could meet. They did, but then apparently Justin acted like Seth was the one that wanted to meet him. He said, it was very weird. He said, and I quote, what the F? I don't want to meet you. Don't act all non plus to meet me. I didn't want to meet you. I was totally cool not meeting you, but I was like, fine. I wouldn't have said anything. I was like, he's a bit of a mother effer, whatever. He's young, the kid's a dick. That's right, folks, Seth Rogen called Justin Bieber a dick. In our ninth spot, we have Kate Moss. In 2014, Bieber and Orlando Bloom got in a heated argument at a nightclub. I'll talk about that more in depth later, but it resulted in the two taking swings at each other. Well, a few days later after the incident, Justin Bieber approached Kate Moss and she was not too thrilled about it. She apparently went off at him, telling him that he needs to behave and smarten up. Apparently, Justin had gone up to her expecting her to gush all over him and instead she really just gave it to him which is pretty embarrassing if you ask me coming in at number eight we have marg helgenberger back from 2010 to 2011 justin bieber made an appearance on the show csi playing serial killer jason mccann well according to csi actress marg helgenberger justin bieber acted like a brat on set not only that but according to her he locked one of the producers in a closet and also just put his fist through a cake that was on the table. Imagine that, just wanting a slice of cake and then Justin Bieber just goes BAM! First up, we have a celebrity stylist. A TikToker with the username I am Tahira decided to speak about the celebrity styling she did for some celebrities and rate which ones were the best and worst. In the video, Tahira gave Anna Kendrick a rating of negative 100 out of 10 and called her a terrible person. The comments flooded asking her to give more details about the interaction, so she decided to make two more videos. In the first video, she said that in 2016, she was working as a stylist and her job was to put together some looks for one of Kendrick's book signings, saying, quote, she comes, I'm walking her through the rack, she won't speak to me, that's strike one. I'm asking her, do you want to wear pants or do you want to wear a dress? She won't say anything. Then Kendrick's PR lady told her that if they wanted Anna to wear one of the looks, they would have to pay her $10,000. Since that was not a part of Tahira's job, she got the PR team to talk about it. In the end, Anna just ended up wearing her own clothes to the signing. But that's not all. Another part of her job was that she had to collect all the gifts that fans left her at the signing. So she collected fan mail, letters, gift cards, drawings, and paintings from Anna's fans. But at the end of the event, instead of taking all the products, Kendrick said that she never looks at that stuff and she told her publicist to trash it all. Apparently years later, Kendrick came back to the store and worked with a different stylist. After that stylist was done with Kendrick, she went up to Tahira and told her that Kendrick got pissed at her because this stylist had no idea who Kendrick was. In our sixth spot, we have Ronda Rousey. It's so random how all these celebrities just hate Justin Bieber. Like out of all people to piss off, a UFC star? I don't know. Basically, Rousey admitted to Cosmopolitan that he was rude to her little sister at the Cannes Film Festival. Apparently, she tried to get him to take a pic with her little sister, who was a huge fan and totally starstruck. And he declined, saying, and I quote, I've already taken a billion pictures today, okay? Imagine how that little girl must have felt. Like, there's her idol, and he just shuts her down because he took too many photos. Rhonda later said, yeah, I don't think I'd want to hang out with him. I'm not a believer. I was, but not anymore. At number five, Avril Lavigne. Hollywood's Chateau Mar Marmont is one of the hottest spots for celebrities. It is quite common to see celebrities at the Chateau Marmont, and this establishment just so happens to be the place where we learned that Avril Lavigne just isn't a huge fan of Lindsay Lohan. Back in 2010, Avril was at the bar in the Chateau Marmont with a group of friends when she noticed that Lindsay was also in the establishment. Lohan reportedly went over to Avril to say hello, but when she got up to her, Avril just lost it. A witness to the incident cited Avril saying to Lindsay, quote, get the hell out of my face, you're fake, you're a loser, I don't like false people. Stay away from me and my friends." End quote. Apparently, Lindsay tried to yell back, asking Avril not to threaten her, and then later tried to get the Chateau Marmont security to throw her out, but this didn't end up working, and instead, Lindsay was the one who ended up leaving the premises. This could have been a warning about some kind of secret feud between Avril and Lindsay. In our fourth spot today, we have Selena Gomez. Of course, she had to be on this list. The two were in an on and off again relationship for quite some time, and fans left them together. In fact, many people thought that they were endgame, but as we later 
found out their relationship was not the healthiest. After their final breakup in 2018, Selena Gomez revealed that the relationship consisted of emotional abuse, and he had really hurt her, and it took her a while to grow out of the victim mentality. One of Anna Kendrick's breakout roles was a side character in the movie Twilight, and a very shady incident happened that the rumor mill has blamed on Kendrick. Before the second Twilight movie came out, called New Moon, a salon owner found a script to the upcoming movie in the trash outside her salon. The first question that was asked was, who would have thrown out a script as precious and as top secret as this? And does this mean that the person didn't like the movie? After further investigation, it was exposed that the script was found outside of a hotel near St. Louis where George Clooney and a bunch of other stars filming the movie Up in the Air were staying. Guess who was filming that movie and also filmed Twilight? None other than Anna Kendrick. Nobody is sure why she did it, but everyone can agree it was not a good look. But that was not all. Anna got in some more hot water when she trashed the filming of the movie. While speaking with Vanity Fair, she reflected on what it was like filming the movie, saying, quote, the first movie we filmed in Portland, Oregon, and I just remember being so cold and miserable. And I just remember my converse being completely soaked through and feeling like, you know, this is a really great group of people and I'm sure we would have been friends at a different time, but I wanna kill everyone. She even got shadier when she later added, quote, although it was also kind of bonding, there was something about it that was like, you know, you go through like some trauma event. Like you imagine people who survived a hot situation and you're kind of bonded for life. Coming in at number two, we have Eminem. Eminem decided to show his disdain for Bieber by including him in his song, A Kiss. He talks about God not giving a damn about Justin Bieber. That's the he he's referring to in the song. So the lyrics go, he's allergic to divas. He'd take meat cleavers to him. He don't give a damn about Bieber do it. What a demon, a behemoth, evil just seems to be seething through him. Okay, Eminem, okay. And in our number one spot today, we have Bill Hader. I honestly can't imagine this guy having drama with anyone. But alas, Justin hosted Saturday Night Live one time and Bill had a lot to say about it. Apparently, Bieber showed up with a 20 person team to set. He said, and I quote, he had a guy holding a piece of pizza, a guy holding a Diet Coke, and going around stage, you're trying to fight through all these people to get dressed. A year later, in another interview, he said, and I quote, I really didn't enjoy having Justin Bieber around. He's the only one who lived up to the reputation. I think that's the only time I felt that way in eight years. That is insane. On number eight, Hilary Duff. It was a feud to end all Disney feuds. There's nothing worse than two teen girls fighting over a boy because you know how messy that can get. This is what happened between Hilary Duff and Lindsay Lohan during their years long feud over Aaron Carter. Their feud first started in 2001 when Aaron Carter was on the set of Lizzie McGuire. The two met and hit it off and they started dating for a bit. But Aaron was also dating Lindsay Lohan at the same time. They both had relationships with Aaron for a little over a year and after they both ended things with him, they both could have just gone their separate ways, but oh no, of course not. Instead, they had a public feud that consisted of both girls crashing each other's film premieres and talking about each other in the media. They antagonized each other for years before deciding that they were too old for their squabbles. Though this wasn't a huge controversial scandal, it was still a big thing for a while to see two Disney darlings at each other's throats like that. They were low-key shady and all because of a boy. The fact that this feud lasted so long can kind of say a lot about Lindsay and how competitive she is and how she isn't afraid to hold a grudge. When I heard that Lindsay was going to be on Saturday Night Live, I knew she was gonna make fun of me. I wasn't honored. I don't think it's an honor to be made fun of on Saturday Night Live. I'm not here to talk bad about her like she talks bad about me all the time. And um, I just knew that it was gonna happen. Coming in at number seven, we have Team USA and Team Canada. Imagine having two Olympic hockey teams against you. That's wild. In 2014, the two teams squared off for the Olympic hockey semifinals, during which there was a billboard present that said, loser keeps Bieber. Now, as some of you may know, Bieber was born and raised in Canada but currently lives in America. Imagine having a whole hockey team trying to get rid of you, just like not wanting to claim you. That's the definition of awkward. At number six, Kim Kardashian. Speaking of Paris Hilton and her hatred towards Lindsay Lohan, let's talk about Paris's former assistant, Kim K, and how she isn't too fond of the former Disney actress either. Now, Kim's hatred towards Lindsay wasn't as apparent as Paris's until 2018, when some comments were made under one of Kim's posts. Kim posted a photo of her wearing braids, and as a result, she was called out for cultural appropriation by her fans, 
Hands, as well as Lindsay Lohan, who commented under the post saying, quote, I'm confused. In response, Kim replied saying, quote, you know what's confusing? Your sudden foreign accent, end quote. Lindsay spoke out about Kim's comment saying that as an actress, sometimes she picks up different accents when she plays roles, and she revealed the thoughts behind the confusion regarding Kim's post saying, quote, I was just confused by the braids because she just had a baby. Very few people thought that this made any sense, but either way, after this little social media spat, these two celebrities have been at odds. Kim's post could have warned us about Lindsay inserting herself into situations and causing drama unnecessarily. This is definitely a strange one, but Anna Kendrick was rated the number one most dangerous person to search for online in 2020 by security company McAfee. I didn't even know that they made lists like this, but somehow Kendrick made the top of this list, even though she's known for quirky and girl next door type roles. This study is done every year to let customers know the best way they can protect their data online. They research which famous names generate the riskiest search results that could potentially trigger consumers to unknowingly install malware on their devices. She was number four in 2019, but was bumped up to number one in 2020. The study assumed that was because of her role in Trolls World Tour. Kendrick first gained fame in 2008 through Twilight, then landed the lead role of Becca in Pitch Perfect, and another in Up in the Air. Even though her roles are pretty tame, the security agency concluded that searching her name generated the most harmful links. Following Kendrick, the next most dangerous names are Sean Combs or P. Diddy, Blake Lively, and Mariah Carey. One executive at the company said, quote, cyber criminals use consumers' fascination with celebrity culture to drive unsuspecting fans to malicious websites that install malware on their devices, potentially putting personal information and login details in the wrong hands, adding that customers need to think twice before clicking. At number four, The Masked Singer. Now, although this isn't just one celebrity, I had to include the cast and crew of the show The Masked Singer because they have their grievances with Lindsay Lohan and their disliking towards the actress could have been a warning about how Lindsay acts behind the scenes as well as her desperation to get a gig in the entertainment industry. Lindsay was once cast as a judge on the Australian version of The Masked Singer. Apparently though, she wasn't a good judge at all because she never knew who the people behind the mask were since she wasn't familiar with the Australian celebrities. On top of that, some of the guests who have appeared on the show have spoken out about Lindsay and how she is known to hold up production for hours on end. Lindsay didn't end up lasting very long on the show and was promptly replaced. At number three, Kate Moss. In the world of Hollywood, competition plays a huge part in the successes and failures of many people's careers. For Kate Moss, her hatred towards Lindsay Lohan had a lot to do with her competition with the actress. Kate was Hollywood's it girl back in the 90s, and about a decade later, Lindsay Lohan came in and overshadowed her. On top of their competition for the spotlight, they also apparently liked the same types of guys, and that also added fuel to the fire. Kate Moss's ex-husband also worked with Lindsay on some music back in the day, which Kate didn't like at all. In 2014, Lindsay moved to London temporarily for work and reportedly hooked up with Kate's ex which, as you can imagine, didn't go over well. Kate has been known to rant about Lindsay and has some serious hatred for her. Kate's attitude towards Lindsay could have been a warning about how the spotlight can sometimes corrupt people, but that, I guess, could be argued for the both of them. Moving on to number three, we have Orlando Bloom. All right, this is probably the one that you all have been waiting for. Orlando Bloom and Justin Bieber definitely do not like each other. Maybe things have changed with time, but for quite a while, they did not like each other. It all started when rumors began to fly about Bieber getting close to Bloom's ex-wife, Miranda Kerr. Some even said that the two hooked up. Then Bieber's ex, Selena Gomez, was spotted with Orlando Bloom, and apparently the two made out. When Bieber and Bloom encountered each other, apparently Bieber made some comments about Miranda Kerr, which Bloom did not like, and at that point, he jumped over a sofa and lunged at Bieber. Then apparently punches were thrown, but they were never landed. And then apparently Leonardo DiCaprio DiCaprio was just present and witnessed this whole fight and was cheering for Bloom. Like, that's just wild. <laughs> And finally, at number one, Grant Bowler. Back in 2012, Lindsay starred in a film titled Liz and Dick, where she portrayed Elizabeth Taylor. The movie was about the scandalous relationship between Liz Taylor and Richard Burton. The film didn't do very well in regards to ratings, as critics said that the film was annoying to watch. But apparently, it wasn't just annoying to watch, it was also annoying to film. Grant Bowler, who played Richard Burton in the film, spoke out about the filming process for Liz and Dick, saying, quote, there were exercises in patience and there were exercises in tolerance, end quote. He said that it was Lindsay 
Lindsay's stalling habits and her holding up the production for extended periods of time that caused him the most frustration. Once again, it could be argued that Grant warned us about Lindsay's work habits, which really doesn't make the actress look good in the eyes of Hollywood. At number 7, Paris Hilton. What happens when two hotshot celebrities get into a confrontation? Things get messy. Because of a confrontation that happened back in the 2000s, Paris Hilton has made her hatred for Lindsay Lohan quite apparent. This all happened after Lindsay was seen hanging around Paris's ex-boyfriend. A couple weeks later, after Lindsay and Paris's ex were seen together, Paris made some pretty crude comments about Lindsay in a video that was seen as pretty cruel because of the nature of her comments. Even years after this whole incident, Paris still wasn't letting up in regards to her hatred towards Lindsay. In 2019, when she was on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, Paris was asked to use three words to describe her former friend Lindsay, and in response she described her with the words beyond, lame, and embarrassing. This whole feud could have warned us about Lindsay because of how she and her former friend got along, but something tells me that there are some behind the scenes details that could change things. Yeah. That's enough, man. That's Paris. enough. Paris, I'm sorry, Lindsay, what'd you say? <laughs> Lindsay Paris is a what? She's a cat? Why is Paris a c? Alright, Lindsay. Lindsay, why is Paris a c? Before we carry on with the video, I want you guys to leave a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far, and while you're at it, consider subscribing to the channel to see more videos like this one. Next up, Blake Lively. Blake Lively and Anna Kendrick starred in the hit movie A Simple Favor together. So not only did they spend tons of time working together, they also had to be on the press tour with one another. Apparently that was a big issue for the women because they hated each other while filming the movie. And it was so bad that the studio executives had to get involved and mediate the tension between the women. In a TikTok, the page Celebrity Memoir Book Club claimed that when filming wrapped on the movie, Lively and Kendrick were not speaking, adding quote, they were basically enemies and their press tours had to be booked separately. The user said that they were not sure which actress was the one that started the feud because both women had been a part of feuds with their co-stars. Lively is previously feuded with Gossip Girl co-star Leighton Meester, while Kendrick is known for allegedly being disrespectful and rude to people ranging from waiters, bartenders, and fans. The TikToker was flooded with hate comments, claiming that it wasn't true, even though the TikToker claimed that they had inside sources. As a clapback, the page shared a DM showing a studio executive at Lionsgate confirming basically everything the person had said. The DM read, quote, they hated each other. The studio even had to have a talk with them about making it look like they liked each other on press tours because it was starting to get obvious. And in particular was really competitive with Blake and was constantly asking to make sure she got more promotion than Blake and even made us Photoshop her cleavage in the simple favor poster to be as big or bigger than Blake's. So from this comment, it seems that Anna Kendrick might have been the reason for the feud. After news of this feud resurfaced, some fans looked back at their media interviews for a simple favor and you can clearly see the tension. In one interview, Anna Kendrick mentioned the fact that she worked with Brian Reynolds, Blake Lively's husband, and she says that she once thought that Blake was really nice, but doesn't know now. It seems like a joke at first, but obviously could hint to the tension going on behind the scenes. Blake then jokingly goes to touch her arm, and Anna sharply responds, don't touch me, which seemed very real to me. Then the pair were talking about Instagram and if they block certain people, and it was revealed that at one point Anna Kendrick blocked Blake lively on Instagram. Then later she decided to mute her instead once that became an option. That whole interaction seemed a little too real to believe it was all playful banter. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with John Bon Jovi. John Bon Jovi had a lot to say about Bieber when he heard that he showed up 80 minutes late to his show in London. He said, and I quote, every generation has guys that do that. None of that is new. Do it once, you can be forgiven. Do it enough times and shame on you. They won't have you back. Then it becomes a cliche. It's really not cool. You're an a-hole. Go to effing work. So Bon Jovi did not hold back on that one, but someone had to say it. Bieber definitely let his fame get to his head at one point and that led to him acting all entitled. Barack Obama. Anna Kendrick found herself in a very strange situation when she ended up insulting the president and even called him an a-hole right to his face. Let me explain. Anna was on Stephen Colbert and explained the story behind how she met Barack Obama and made him double over with laughter during their meeting. During the conversation, Anna says that she was invited to a presidential event and showed up very early. Then during Obama's speech, he pointed her out personally and praised her for her movie Up in the Air. Afterward, when the two had a minute to chat, the president said he hoped that she hadn't felt singled out by him mentioning her movie. Quote, I hope I didn't embarrass you earlier. Kendrick then responded, quote, yeah, you're such an a-hole. Then she mentioned that she was the first to arrive and that she was very punctual being from Maine. 
When Obama asked her if that was a thing, she replied, quote, you don't know that, you're the president. That entire interaction then made the president double over with laughter, but who knows if he felt that it was very awkward. At number two, Paul Schrader. Paul Schrader is known for having written films such as Taxi Driver, Raging Bull, and First Reformed. He's also known for the 2013 film The Canyons, which became mainstream because of the cinematic debut of adult film star James Dean, and including graphic adult content of his co-star Lindsay Lohan. After wrapping up his work with Lohan, Schrader had spoken out about his grievances with the actor, saying that the experience of working with Lohan left him feeling irritated. He spoke out about how she would constantly fail to fulfill her publicity promises, how even after accommodations were made for the actress, she would still be a no-show, and how she was generally unreliable. He told sources that he hired her when no one else would, but regretted that decision after seeing how little she cared about the production or the people working with her. This certainly could be seen as a warning to other Hollywood executives looking to hire Lindsay in the future. After hearing about Schrader, experience working with the actress, I doubt other people would want to hire Lindsay. What is she like one-on-one? -on -one? Because, I mean, we always see these stories about Lindsay, you know, falling off the rails and, you know, she's crashed her car and, you know, is, is she cool, like, one-on-one? -on -one? <laughs>